am Jackie Glasgow. I am currently the division chair in the education division. And it's a pleasure to welcome all of you here this afternoon for this wonderful opportunity to acknowledge some esteemed colleagues and Southwestern. First, I'd like to <clears throat> let you know that every semester we uh, select students from our uh, teaching program who are getting ready to graduate, uh, become teachers themselves in the field, as teachers of promise. Uh, they exhibit specific characteristics that not only we as faculty recognize, but also uh, cooperating teachers and supervisors recognize in the field. I'd like to let you know that this year, uh, for fall of 2017, Esmeralda Garcia and Dalton Miller were our Teachers of Promise for fall. And for spring, Kimberly Whiteside and Carrie McNutt for spring of 2018. Many of our students today are involved with uh, the Kansas uh, National Education Association's student program assembly, and so many are active in that, and it's being held today at, uh, in Winfield and on Southwestern campus. In October of 1999, <clears throat> Southwestern College received a gift from the estate of Marjorie Smith, a 1927 graduate who had taught mathematics at Lyons and Dexter, Kansas for 20 years. This gift was to be used to establish a Hall of Fame to honor Southwestern College, College alumni educators who have made a significant contributions in the field of education. Since the inaugural year of 2000, the Southwestern College Educators Hall of Fame has been held to honor outstanding educators. The educators Hall of Fame display is located on the second floor of Mossman Hall in the Center for Teaching of Education. I would like to call your attention to the beautiful glass creations on the table beside me. These one-of-a-kind awards will be given annually to Educator Hall of Fame inductees. They are handcrafted by Mr. Scott Hartley, class of 97, a Southwestern science major who went on to use his artistic talents and his knowledge of science to become a master glass blower. Scott is also a 2016 inductee into the Southwestern Fine Arts, Fine Arts Hall of Fame. We are fortunate to be able to give these unique gifts to our inductees to permanently remind them of their place in our hall. Before we begin inducting the new class, we would like to recognize any previous Educator of educators or scholars, Hall of Fame inductees who are here today. Please stand and receive our applause. <laughs> now it is my pleasure to introduce the 2017 Educators Hall of Fame honorees. Joe Coles, class of 72, a speaker, consultant, and teacher. Joe has been a devoted educator for over 40 years, working as a teacher, counselor, coach, athletic director, and administrator. He has been a presenter at schools and communities and at conferences throughout the Kansas, the Midwest, and the nation. For over the last 10 years, he has shared his passion for making education and organizations better as a presenter at conferences that include the National Association of Secondary Principals, Rachel's Challenge, Cal Ripken Foundations, Coaches and Captains Training, and state school boards. He received the 2008 Outstanding Service Award from Kansas Association of Elementary School Principals. He co-authored There Are No Bullies and is an instructor for seven habits of highly effective people. Please give a welcome for Joe Coles. Thank you. On behalf of Bruce D. Haven, oh, no, this is the wrong index card. Um, 
one of my two of my greatest things that's gone on at Southwestern College is I got to accept Bruce D. Haven's Hall of Fame twice, and I never dreamed about being in my own. Uh, so I want to say thank you, and I want to thank Southwestern College for this wonderful opportunity. I just know it never would have ever happened without a whole bunch of people. And it started with um, someone that we don't always notice, and I think it's so fitting for the education department. Uh, I didn't come from a, a college-educated family. I came from an unbelievable family of hard workers and that. My dad quit school when he was a sophomore in high school. I asked him why he quit, and he said, I threw the book out the window, and they said, go get it, and I never came back, okay? My mom was the only one in her family to graduate from high school. So we didn't know about colleges. I was a first-generation college person. So the per people that influenced me to come to Southwestern College were my teachers. In those days in Coldwater, Kansas, we had, I think, four, maybe five Southwestern teachers, and that's how I heard of Southwestern. I wasn't a highly recruited athlete. Uh, I was just a person of interest. Even though I was all Coldwater, they didn't recruit me very well, okay? <laughs> Uh, so I want to I want to keep that in mind as we think about our education department and how important our teachers are, uh, not only in teaching students but in Southwestern College and go from there. My folks, uh, how did I stay here? I stayed here because my folks ran a grocery store and they worked very very hard and they helped support me and, and gave me the ability to come here. And so uh, I, I, I just wish they were here today, and I know they're above uh, being able to see this opportunity. And it was very, very special. Um, and once I got here, uh, I, I, I had a few of my friends that I knew uh, from Coldwater. So the first few weeks, I kind of hung out with them. And then one day, in the, I was going to play basketball. And one day in the locker room, we had a preseason thing. And I hear this guy just talking 90 mile an hour, how he ran into the back of a truck. And, and uh, he came on up, and, and he said he uh, it was, it, and then all, it was, his friend was with him. That happened to be Bruce DeHaven and almost killed Bruce DeHaven before it ever happened. I'm thinking, who is this guy? You know, and it was Kenny Valentine. And I ended up some of my teammates, and I'm sitting there going, do I want to be part of this basketball team? And then uh, uh, through that and through my basketball program, I got to be with uh, some of my real brothers of, of Beta Romeo. I know a lot of you have, that have, if you've ever attended this, they're uh, as close a group of people as I've ever been around in my life besides my own immediate family. And I, and I trust them and, and, and care with them uh, about brothers. And K-9, thank you for nominating me and, and going from there. What had happened is it, it, it actually developed, and it's so unique of kids and kids, we were kids in those days, but they created a certain amount of synergy. Synergy where we all just kind of grew together and, and we helped one another and, and now looking where we are today, if you don't know, we get together uh, every year, a group of us, and a whole bunch of them are here today, and I say thank you uh, so much for the ones that could attend. I, I say thank you for those that aren't here because in a couple of weeks we're having a, a, a big uncommon athlete sports thing, and we're having a get-together with the football program and that, so a bunch of them are coming in later, but, but they were really, really important. Um, and, and so... Southwestern was really important to me, and it gave me the opportunity to do things that I love to do. So we started teaching, and I got to teach in Cimarron, where Rich Jantz grew up, and, and I, I, I knew everything there was to know because they hired me as a head coach, and I only taught like six individual classes, different preps that year, and I don't remember what I made, but I know I was the assistant football, head basketball, and head track coach, and I made $1,000 for that. Okay, and so uh, it was a it was a blessing, and like I said, I knew everything there was to know because I was a head coach, and we ended up winning two games that year. I learned I didn't know very much. Okay, and so uh, I ended up uh, 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 the the best thing that ever happened at, at Cimarron is I met my wife there of 41 years, and and that was our next step uh, in, in life of of getting to do that, and we have three of our children uh, that are here today, and, and uh, they made the trip. I kept telling them, I said, don't come. It's just, just going to be a short thing, and they showed up, and seven of our nine grandchildren are here, and the two that aren't here, uh, they're, they're busy, and, and, 
and that. And so we've got kids in Kingman, Kansas. We've got kids in Cimarron, Kansas. We've got kids in Montezuma, Kansas, and that's a real joy. Every time I do a student or a teacher workshop, I said, I'm a giver. I said, I love to give you information. And I said, you can have anything that I have except two things. I said, you can't have my wife and you can't have my grandkids, but you sure in the heck can have my own kids, okay? <laughs> and uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, but I, I, I say that and, and, and go from there. Um, I want to thank Southwestern again uh, for giving me that opportunity. Uh, I've been so lucky in my life. Uh, not only did I, I start out as that teacher and a coach, and later I become a school counselor just by accident. Uh, a counselor had left the school, and they gave it to me on a provisional. And, and I always wondered why things put me in line and why I got to do this, and sometimes why I didn't get to do this. And one example why I didn't get to do this is I actually applied for a job at Southwestern College. You may not know that, but I applied for the head track job many, many years ago, and it was between me and Jim Helmer. And... Uh, <laughs> That was the smartest decision Southwestern College ever made, was hiring Jim Helmer as track coach. And I didn't realize the opportunity it would give me later uh, to, to do what I do and, and love. Uh, I, I get to go and I get to work with kids and staff every day. I, you know, people all the time when you reach our age, they say, well, when are you, when are you gonna retire? And I say, never. Uh, I said, sometime I'm going to slow down, but why would I retire from something I love to do every day? So I, I am truly blessed, and, and a huge blessing for today is, is I get the opportunity to go in to this thing with two of my brothers, in, in, in Chuck and, and Bill, and I can't think of a more rewarding time than to be accepted to the Southwestern Co uh, College Education Hall of Fame with two of my closest, and so thank you very much. I truly appreciate it. Chuck Haig, class of 72, taught and coached for 43 years in public schools in Valley Center, and McPherson, Kansas, and in Mount Pleasant, Winsboro, and Temple, Texas. He was awarded the Temple High School Teacher of the Year Award in 2009, as well as the Temple Daily Telegram Golden Apple Award in 2013-14. This award is given annually to teachers nominated by students from school districts in the newspaper's Central Texas distribution area. He had been nominated two previous times. He coached Temple High School to the 1992 Class 5A Division II State Football Championship. In 1993, Temple was a state semifinalist, and in 2014, they were state finalists. He also helped coach teams to numerous <laughs> district championships, by district championships, and area championships. Let's give a welcome for Chuck Haig. Wow, what a day to be a teacher and a builder. I'm pleased, honored, and extremely humbled to accept this award and to join an amazing group of past recipients who have dedicated their lives to making a difference in the lives of our youth through education. Let me first say a special thanks and congratulations also to Joe Coles, who was thoughtful enough to nominate me, and also to the selection committee members for supporting my nomination. I would like to also give an enormous salute to all of this year's nominees and fellow recipients, each of whom have made an incredible contribution to the great institution of education. Why am I standing here today? Well, to answer that question, I need for you to understand that I didn't make this journey alone. Numerous people in my life have supported me along the way. 
I owe a great deal of thanks to my mother and father. They were both hardworking and conscientious people, and I've tried to make those two traits a part of who I am. I'm also blessed with an amazing supportive family. My wife, Julie, my daughter, Jenny Haig Dameron, and my son, Joey. Julie has been our family's rock. She understood and accepted the fact that teaching and coaching was going to require a great amount of time and effort. She allowed me to do both without question. She spent countless hours and days substituting for me. Needless to say, I have also had a con and continue to have a great deal of support from other family members and friends. Many of my closest friends are those that I met here at Southwestern and I cherish their friendship beyond explanation. Two of my closest friends, Joe and Bill, are sharing the podium with me today. A huge credit also goes out to Southwestern College and my experience here. Being a builder has always been something that I've been extremely proud of. What have teachers, professors, and coaches, or without having teachers, professors, and coaches, to inspire me today would not have been possible. This moment is truly not about me as much as it, as it is about a few people that I'd like to mention. Thank you, McNulty, Wilgers, Zavuto, Hauer, Pinge, Grant, Elliott, Foster, Romeo, Stevens, Buller, Estes, Spradlin, McQueen, Seipel, Mihuran, Schmidt, Irwin, Winslow, Villarreal, Davis, and Cavalier. Of all the names that I've just mentioned, Dennis Cavalier, an ex-builder, was my consistent mentor until his passing. This honor is for those that I just mentioned, some of you, whom I'm sure you've recognized. Also, there were countless others who inspired me and encouraged me in my teaching and coaching career. In closing, I want to say how grateful I am to receive this recognition, especially knowing that Southwestern has produced many great teachers and educators that are equally deserving. I considered it a privilege to walk into my classroom every day. I enjoyed helping students grow academically as well as emotionally and socially. While awards and honors are wonderful, wonderful to receive, just knowing that you've made a difference in a student's educational journey is truly reward enough. I was very fortunate and felt great pride knowing that I went home each day feeling good about making a small difference in my school and in my community. Nothing can take the place of pride in what you do. Thank you. God bless the work done by teachers and educators. Go Builders. Chris Grooms Trimmer, class of 75, encouraged her students in all aspects of their development during four decades of teaching. In addition to requiring academic excellence in the social studies classes she taught, Chris was co-founder and director of the Academic Spirit Week when she taught at Douglas High School from 1976 to 1980 and at Winfield High School 1997 to the present. She organized the annual Staff Choice Awards that have recognized more than 100 students for their contributions to the school. She was student council sponsor for 12 years and three times Winfield High School hosted the regional conference. Her emphasis on leadership resulted in a collaboration with Southwestern and Legacy to develop the kids impacting Cowley County. And as Spirit Squad sponsor, 
She organized school-wide Viking Pride assemblies. The Winfield NEA recognized her as master teacher in 2005. Let's give a warm welcome to Chris Turmer. captive audience and a microphone. <laughs> One of my favorite quotations comes from Ralph Waldo Emerson who once said, enthusiasm is one of the most powerful engines of success. When you do a thing, do it with all your might. Put your whole soul into it, stamp it with your own personality, be active, be energetic, be enthusiastic and faithful, and you will accomplish your object. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. I see confirmation of this at Winfield High School where I am surrounded by amazing people who achieve incredible things. They inspire me daily. I teach speech, psychology, American government, and leadership. I happen to think these are among the most important subjects taught in the high school. I try to teach students how their government works, or at least how it's supposed to. I then attempt to give them the skills they need to be active participants in their government and their community. I want them to understand that they each have a voice and a vote, then I encourage them to use them both. I believe our nation will be better because of them. I am thrilled to be here today, and I want to be sure to thank Southwestern College for this wonderful honor. While I attended Southwestern for only one year, it has most certainly made its mark on me. Ed and I moved to Winfield in 1974 on the day we were married because we could not afford a honeymoon. He was the new Winfield High School debate coach, and I was still a college student, needing only 14 more hours to graduate. I thought I'd pick up those hours at Southwestern, and then I'd be done in a semester. Easy peasy, ha, if only. I was told that if I wanted to graduate from Southwestern, I had to take 40 hours. I thought about it, so I did in one year. This is when I met Dr. Phil Schmidt, and Dr. Larry Wilgers. I soon found out that these two men were pretty darn smart. One of the classes I took from Dr. Schmidt was British history. I started out working for an A, but I ended up being grateful, very grateful, to survive the class with a B. And if I remember correct, I think it was a B minus. After writing several papers for this man, if you've had him, you know where I'm going with this. I learned that he obviously owned stock in red pens, or at least if he didn't, he should have. My goal was simple, to write one paper with one page with no corrections. Never happened. I have heard that he was often lovingly referred to as the grammar Nazi. Those of you who have taken a class from him know the truth of which I speak. I think I got that right. I don't know if this is still the policy or not, but when I graduated from Southwestern, graduates could get back, come back every five years and take several hours of class for free. So I did. I took a psychology class from Claudia Gere. She was tough and fair and wonderful. I believe I saw Roger Moon come in. Roger, here you go. I also took a class from Roger Moon called Responsibility to the Future. Please keep in mind by the time I took this class, part of my future was already gone. In this class, we read Fahrenheit 451, and the class embraced the idea that books should not be burned. Later in the same class, we read a book called The Chalice and the Blade, which was a bit controversial. Some students in this same class called for the banning of this book from campus. I hope that as sometime in their future, they saw the contradiction. It was at least interesting to watch this all play out. I've got one more Phil story. In my quest to stay certified, I found myself in his statistics class. Did the man teach everything? He assured me this would be fun and that I would use this knowledge all the time. Why, just think how I could analyze what my students were doing in class. I assured him I could already do this. Let me show you. A's, B's, C's, D's, F's. Oh, look at all those A's. I must be a teaching genius. They must be very smart. This is wonderful. The next time around, I sort them out again. Oh, look, there are D's and F's. They didn't study. 
I must have missed something. We need to change something. He listened to me, sighed, and said he would get me through the class, <laughs> which of course he did. Seems like I have a lot to talk about, and this is only with one year of attendance. Think how long this speech could be if I had actually gone here for four years. <laughs> I would be remiss if I did not mention Southwestern's leadership program under the direction of Cheryl Rood and Bree Wood. Southwestern partners with Legacy and local high schools to implement KIC, Kids Impacting Cowley County. Through this partnership, I've seen firsthand what a quality leadership program looks like. Before I sit down, I'd like to acknowledge some people in the audience. My husband, of course, who has been at Belle Plaine, I assume you've warmed up by now. Okay. Our daughters, Kyle and Jess, who told me they were so sorry they couldn't make it, and then here they are. You actually are pretty good at fooling me, and I wonder just how much practice you've had at that. <laughs> we'll talk later. I love that my sister and my niece are here. Then there are seven fabulous young women who are my partners in crime and are members of the fabulous Topeka High School class of 1971. Hoy, hoy, mighty Troy. We will always be friends. We all know too much about each other. I'd also like to thank my administration, fellow WH staff members, and local friends who are here today. Again, let me thank Southwestern for this wonderful recognition. One of the honors of my life has been to be a teacher. Horace Mann once said, be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. What better victory could there be than to make a positive difference in the life of a young person? A teacher has the opportunity to make that difference every day. Amen. The Marilyn McNeish Award for, Spe for Se Special Education was created in 2000 for the purpose of recognizing Southwestern College alumni who have given a distinguished service as special education teachers. The original corpus of the fund supporting the McNeish Award was established through the generosity of Nick Merriman and Margot Kelman. It's my pleasure to award this here to Bill Requa. Bill, class of 70, in 2006, has spent 31 years in public education. Teaching social sciences and coaching a variety of sports, he was a faculty member of Coldwater Junior High and Elementary, Valley Center High School and Udall High School. His coaching duties included being head basketball coach at Udall from 1983 to 1985, and at Valley Center from 1985 through 2000. In these positions, he was notable for never missing class and always holding his students accountable for their actions and work. After earning his master's degree in special education from Southwestern College in 2006, he joined the staff of the Chisholm Life Skills Center in Wichita. His efforts in special education with students with behavior disorders has made a difference in the lives of those individuals, nominators say. Let's give a welcome to Bill Requa. I feel very fortunate that I am in a, a year with a group of these gentlemen here, and although I haven't ever met you, <laughs> uh, and being inducted with them. Uh, the two guys I've known for over 50 years, and I did uh, regular education just like they did for about 30-some uh, years in, in teaching social studies and PE, mainly at Valley Center High School. Um, and in 2004, I decided to take a different uh, direction and uh, return to Southwestern to earn a master's degree in special education. Uh, my wife said if she had known it was gonna make that much of a difference to, in me, she had had me done a long time ago. 
But uh, uh, we, um, as teachers, we always kind of think, well, we go to the level that we teach. So uh, right now, you've got a guy in front of you that uh, has a below 70 IQ, is, has autism, and uh, with t there's times that paranoid schizophrenic flares up in me because those are the type of, of students that I deal with on a daily basis. Uh, at Chisholm Life Skills Center, uh, it's a special day school in Wichita that focuses on 18 to 21 year old adults and getting them ready to go into the community as independent as they possibly can. Uh, we have 35 enclaves, that are jobs that our paras take the, the students out. Some are paid, some are non-paid. And uh, last year, with them being employees of USD 259, uh, they earned over $95,000 accumulatively. Our curriculum is not math or science or English. We focus on daily living skills, social skills, and uh, occupational skills. Our classes include, like I teach city bus. I take kids out, train them to use the bus system because they will never drive. And that way they can have some independence getting to work, getting their groceries, and, go, and entertainment. We have about 140 students. Few people, even in Wichita, know that we exist. But we are, uh, we've had tours from across the country and Europe and China that have come to observe what we do in, in our school. Uh, I do want to thank my family sitting right there, uh, my wife, Tony, my son, Nathan, and his, my grandson, Wyatt, my daughter, Allie, and her, my granddaughters, uh, Grace and Lily, uh, who made it a priority to come to this event today. Uh, even though um, my wife, her stepmother's funeral is in a couple of hours, and my son's uh, other, my other daughter, granddaughter is having her prom tonight, and right now she's doing nails, hair, and... <laughs> And, and getting their makeup done. So uh, it's, it's a full day. Uh, my dad, Riley, is sitting there with my sister Cheryl. They flew in from Florida. I, I think that may be the, as far as anybody's come for this event. And my Aunt Jerry and her daughter Jessie uh, have joined us today to celebrate this occasion. And it means a lot that family put aside everything else and focused to come to this event, and we thank Southwestern for it. Uh, we got, I got buddies back there, Millard, K-9, Bailey, that uh, I want to thank for being here today. It means a lot. Uh, Hokey, he was the person that nominated me. Um, you know, he came to me and said, hey, I'm going to nominate you for special ed. I said, well, I don't know if I have any special honors or, or any of that kind of stuff. You know, I'm kind of one of these guys in the trenches. And the, I go to get there every day and do what I can to help kids. He said, well, Southwestern needs to honor more people like that, so I'm going to put your name in. Didn't expect anything to come of it because it's kind of like uh, I related it to basketball, you know, uh, uh, I was a, a defensive player, and, and uh, I could handle the ball and get it to the scores, but uh, that's not who gets the headlines or, or the recognition. You're just in the trenches get, doing your job, and that's kind of what I feel like I do at, at Chisholm is I'm in the trenches. I do my job, uh, but uh, I want to thank uh, Southwestern for recognizing somebody in the trenches. Uh, also, I'd like to thank... Uh, uh, Southwestern for in 1970s they sent me on the track uh, for general education 
And then I came back to them, and they sent me down the track for special education, uh, and with a degree in, at each time. And I hate to think what I'd be doing if I had not come to Southwestern, got a degree, and went into education, uh, and I don't know. I shake my head to think. Uh, most of all, I want to thank my lifelong friends that, that are here. Uh, and every year, as, as uh, Joe was saying, we get together. Uh, and every year, there may be one less of us, but it means that much more because we got time to spend with each other. Thank you. to thank you for coming to this recognition of outstanding mound builder educators. If you know of other individuals who should be considered for the Hall of Fame, I hope you will fill, fill out the form in your Founders Weekend booklet. Your help is greatly appreciated.